the AU anthem immediately to be followed by the Zimbabwe national anthem. Derek. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we shall begin with the AU anthem. Let us all unite and celebrate together the victories won for our liberation. Let us dedicate ourselves to rise together to defend our liberty and unity. O oh, sons and daughters of Africa, flesh of the sun and flesh of the sky, let us make Africa the tree of life. The National Anthem of Zimbabwe. Simuza Zimbabwe Thank you very much, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. You may be seated. May I invite Commissioner Joseph Asako to take your seat at the podium? May I also invite Joyce, who's here, to take a seat on the other side of the podium.
Honorable Minister Mpumira, who is the host minister. Your Excellency, let's allow Commissioner Sako to come through and meet their Excellencies. Thank you very much. Your Excellency, the, the President of the Republic of Zimbabwe, Comrade Emerson Munangagwa, may I also recognize their Excellencies, the Heads of State and Government here with us today, and allow me to recognize in that context his Excellency, the President of the Republic of, Zim of, of Zambia, His Excellency E.C. Lungu. I think let's give a round of applause. <laughs> Thank you very much. His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Namibia, Mr. Hage Gebong. His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Botswana, His Excellency Masisi. <laughs> Representing the President of Angola, a Honorable Paula Francisca. <laughs> Allow me in the same breath to recognize the presence of the, from the AU, Commissioner Sako. <laughs> Allow me also to recognize from the UN UNEP the Deputy Executive Director, Joyce Musia. <laughs> the host minister from the Republic of Zimbabwe, Honorable Chris Kampfumira. Honorable ministers from the African Union member states here present, the Under Secretary for State in the Government of the United Kingdom, Honorable Teresi Coffey, the Minister of State for Provincial Affairs in Matebeleland North Province, Honorable Richard Moyo, the Secretary General for CITES, the Convention of Interna on International Trade on Endangered Species, of wildlife, uh, flora and fauna, Ms. Yvonne Higuera. The representative of the UNWTO, Mr. Marcel, here with us this morning. The Chief Secretary to the President and Cabinet in the Republic of Zimbabwe, Dr. MJ M. Sibanda, as represented. The Chairman of the Public Service Commission, of the Republic of Zimbabwe, Dr. Wungwe, as represented by Commissioner Howe, the President of the Chiefs Council of the Republic of Zimbabwe, here present, and in the same breath, I want to recognize also all the other traditional leaders who are here and who have been taking part in the deliberations over the last couple of days, the honorable members of parliament and senate here present, his worship, the mayor of the town of Victoria Falls, Councillor Jamini, the executive director of the Kavango Zambezi Transfrontier Conservation Area, Dr. Nyambe Nyambe, service chiefs members of the diplomatic corps, senior government officials here present, heads of development and international cooperating partners here present with us today, distinguished heads of various public enterprises and state institutions in Zimbabwe and across Africa here present, captains of industry, 
all our sponsors and partners who have teamed with us to make this event the success that it will be. Members of the international and local media houses here present, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning to you all. Good morning to you all. Thank you very much for saying good morning to me. Now, one of the issues that happens when you attend meetings like this, the chances are you are seated to a person you have never met in life. Now, here is what happens. If you don't greet them in the first five minutes, nothing will happen. But it's quite possible that after about 10 or so minutes, you will drop your pen and as fate had it, it will go towards that person. Now, the challenge you will face is whether to greet that person first or to ask them to pick your pen. May I request that you look to the person to your right and to your left and just say good morning to them. <laughs> Thank you very much. Now, can you imagine what would have happened if I didn't say what I said? Thank you very much. Honorable, Your Excellencies, uh, we are beginning our program, but allow me to, 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 to invite an opening video which will put this whole discussion into context. Uh, and, and that video will be led by a Zimbabwean lady. She has been a lot of passion for tourism, has performed, has done songs to, for tourism and uh, wildlife conservation. Ladies and gentlemen, can I introduce Irene Mtangadura? Irene.
thank you very much. There should be more of that. I noticed on the program there is a gala dinner, and there should be more of that in a more relaxed manner. Your Excellencies, Honorable Ministers, distinguished guests, we are in a national park. I know as the program stands, we will be having cocktails. We will be moving from one hotel to the other. We will be obviously taking different types of drinks. But I want to assure you, when you are driving back to your hotel, should you encounter something that you think could just be an elephant or a buffalo or a giraffe or any of those animals, I want to appeal to you that reassure yourself that it has little to do with what you were drinking. <laughs> it is an animal because we are in a national park. So you will definitely be encountering the animals. But there is a minister in Zimbabwe who has the responsibility of ensuring that the wildlife and the tourism sector thrives. She, is, she was voted this year at the International Tri Travel Bows held annually, for those who know, in Germany, the biggest travel and tourism fair, she was voted, and allow me to introduce the current tourism minister of the year for the Africa region, Senator Priska Mfumira. Honorable Minister. Your Excellency, the President of the Republic of Zimbabwe, Comrade Emerson Dambuzum Nangagwa, his Excellency, the President of the Republic of Botswana, Mr. Mokwes Eric Masisi, His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Namibia, Mr. Haig Gottfried Gengo, His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Zambia, Mr. Edgar Chagwa Lungu, His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Angola, Joao Manuel Gonzalez Lorenzo, represented by the Honorable Minister of Environment, <coughs> Honorable Paula Francisco, the Minister of State for Provincial Affairs in Matabeland North, Honorable Richard Moyo, the Minister Under Secretary of State in the Government of the United Kingdom, Minister of Environment, Honorable Dr. Therese Kofi, the African Union Commissioner for Rural Economy and Agriculture, Ambassador Josepha Sako, the Secretary General of CITES, Ms. Yvonne Iguero, the United Nations Environment Program, Acting Secretary, Ms. Joyce Musuya, the representative of the Secretary General of the United Nations World Tourism Organization, Mr. Marcel Lita, the chairman of the chief secretary to the president and cabinet of the Republic of Zimbabwe, Dr. Mishek Spanda, is represented, the president of the traditional chiefs council, Honorable Chief Charumbira, and traditional chiefs here present, honorable members of, of parliament, colleagues, all protocol observe. <clears throat> it is with great pleasure that I welcome you all to Zimbabwe, a country richly endowed with abundant natural resources, particularly the diverse wild species. Zimbabwe is indeed honored to host this inaugural Africa Wild Economy Summit to celebrate our wildlife heritage and share ideas on how to grow a sustainable wildlife economy. We are humbled with the confidence bestowed on this Zimbabwe <coughs> to host this historic summit. It is a pleasure indeed to realize that all the five economic regions of Africa are represented from the north, west, east, central, and south represented 
at ministerial level. <laughs> Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, the Victoria Falls, where we are meeting for this summit, is the tourism capital in the region. It is also one of the seven natural wonders of the world and acclaimed World Heritage Site. Further, Victoria Falls stands tall in sustainable wildlife conservation issues and for many years, immemorial people and wildlife have coexisted around this area. It is part of the Kavango Zambezi Transfrontier Conservation Area, Kaza TFCA, comprising Angola, Botswana, Namibia, Zambia, and Zimbabwe. The Kaza is not, no doubt, one of the biggest transfrontier parks in the world and offers a lot of investment opportunities. It is slowly emerging as the beacon of sustainable management of shared natural and cultural resources in a collaborative manner across territorial boundaries. The diverse wildlife offers vast opportunities for economic and social development for our countries through sustainable use of wildlife assets, ecotourism, and related ancillary services to protected areas. We are therefore united against illegal wildlife syndicates, which promote the poaching of our prized wildlife posing a serious threat to the future of the wildlife sector. This summit affords the continent a unique opportunity to cross fertilization of ideas in wildlife management. We also hope it can unite all stakeholders and diverse players in the wildlife sector. These range from political leadership, communities, and the private sector who all need to join hands to come up with ideas and solutions designed to bring about sustainable socioeconomic benefits to our people. Your Excellencies, invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, it is our collective desire that the deliberations at this summit will produce tangible outcomes which transform the wildlife economies of Africa. I wish you all a pleasant stay in Zimbabwe and please sample many of our tourism products in and around Victoria Falls. I thank you. Thank you, Honorable Minister Senator Fumira. Ladies and gentlemen, as we move with our program, allow me to introduce the next presenter representing the UN Environment Program, the Deputy Executive Director, Joyce Musuya. As he walks to the podium, Joyce, you want to come through? Joyce was appointed to the post in 2018 that she holds. She has served as acting Executive Director overseeing UN Environment Portfolio in 33 countries and is administering nine multilateral environmental agreements on a critical environment issues. May I invite Joyce, a round of applause. Thank you very much. Uh, Your Excellency President Mnangagwa of the Republic of Zimbabwe, Your Excellency President Hage Gottfried Gernob of Namibia, Your Excellency President Edgar Chagwalungu of Zambia, Your Excellency President Mogwetsi Masisi of Botswana, Representative of President of Angola, Excellency Paula Francisco Coelho, African Union Commissioner, Excellency Josefa Sacco, Distinguished Ministers of Environment, Tourism, Wildlife, and ladies and gentlemen. I am truly honored to welcome you all and to join the Minister of Environment 
from Zimbabwe to the first Africa Wildlife Economy Summit. I am extremely humbled to be speaking to such an illustrious gathering because ladies and gentlemen, your countries, our countries, are home to the most beautiful places on earth and the future of our planet's treasures rests with us all. We are all here today because we share a common vision for our continent. We believe that wildlife and wild spaces of Africa will survive only if the people who live closest to them are their stewards. And I'm delighted that this dream is shared across Africa. From Zimbabwe to Botswana, from Zambia to Rwanda, we have powerful examples of the success we can achieve when wildlife and people are able to live and thrive in harmony. A wildlife economy is a powerful and central tool of economic growth, poverty reduction, and biodiversity conservation. It is central to the efforts of our continent, of our leaders, to improve the quality of lives of millions of people. And it is one that I believe we can and indeed are embracing together to script a just and fulfilling future for all people. We may be many nations, but our story is one. Thank you for coming today to share our story and ensure future generations enjoy not only what we inherited, but must protect for our children and future generations. This event is timely. The outcome of the event will also help us at the UN Environment Program to inform the Secretary General's Climate Action Summit, which will be held in New York in September 2019. The voice of Africa leadership is absolutely important for the success of the Secretary General Summit. Our heartfelt thanks to the President of Zimbabwe, His Excellency Mnanangwa, and the Government of Zimbabwe for your leadership and generosity in hosting this important gathering. We thank you for a very warm Zimbabwean hospitality, which we have all benefited from. In my native Kiswahili, In my native Kiswahili, as a Tanzanian, we have a saying, and I will speak in Kiswahili and then translate it. Chombo hakiendi ikiwa kila mtu anapiga makasia yake. In English, it means a boat does not go forward if each one of us is rowing his or her own way. So let's get together and row the wildlife economy forward I wish you all the very best and look forward to new commitments and actions that put wildlife at the forefront of economic development and the future we want for Africa. Thank you very much. Thank you, Joyce. A round of applause as she takes a seat. The message comes out loud and clear. We need to pull together. We need to pull in the same direction for us to achieve our results. Our next speaker, Your Excellencies, is the former Secretary General for the Inter Africa Coffee Organization. She is an agronomist by profession, but she's currently serving as the Commissioner for Agriculture, Rural Economy and the environment at the Africa Union Commission, and she comes in standing in for the chairperson. She's Angolan by birth, but Pan-African by profession. Please, let's welcome Ambassador Josepha Sako. Thank you, the Master of Ceremony. Muito obrigada. With your permission, Excellency Presidents of the African Union Commission, CEO, uh, it is, uh, I am honored to deliver this statement on behalf of the African Union Commission. Allow me to bring you warm greetings from His Excellency Musa Fatima Hamad, Chairperson of the African Union Commission. 
due to a peer engagement, is not able to be here. He is nevertheless keen on the outcome of this meeting and look forward to a successful inaugural African Wildlife Economy Summit. I would like to thank the government of Zimbabwe for hosting this very important inaugural African Wildlife Economic Summit and for the warm hospitality accorded to all the delegates here. A summit is a very much in line with our goal number seven of the agenda, African Agenda 20, uh, 2063 under the strategic po uh, priority areas on sustainable natural management and biodiversity conservation, genetic resources, and ecosystem. Excellencies, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, wildlife and biodiversity in general is the feature of African development, the prosperity of countries and continent who want to be counted in future lives in the conservation of ecosystem and genetic material. As these resources are getting scarce and those who will, be, who will preserve them stand to charge more to their access. Africa still holds a wealth and a la, uh, of wildlife species, making it one of the leading continents in some of the big mammals. The, the continent-rich diversity of fauna and flora represents about a quarter of the global biodiversity. Our div div biodiversity is those an important component for attaining sustainable development goals. If well managed, Africa rich biodiversity can be multiply, multiple benefits to community from tourism and ecosystem services. Other indirect benefits including good health as a result of clean air and water and noise pollution free land, uh, landscape in addition to the regulation of climate and conservation of soil. Tourism is on other hand provide, uh, provides a more profitable land use of option for a natural based economy than other sector, especially in remote and marginal areas. The sector is labor intensive and those has potential to create more jobs, especially for women and the youth. A good number of African countries are among the world's top tourist uh, destination for watching big games and gorilla trekking. Excellencies, of distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, unfortunately, our biodiversity is currently under threat. The recent report of the Intergovernmental Science Policy Platform on Biodiversity and Ecosystem Services one has that our activity has put one million species in danger of extinction. Humans are responsible for destruction of biodiversity, altering from 75% of earth land and 66% of marine ecosystems since pre-industrial time. Key drivers of the, of the biodiversity loss include the illegal trade in uh, wild fauna and flora, illegal trade deprives local community as well as government socially and economically important resources and the associated incentive for safeguarding biodiversity. It is estimated that illegal trade in wildlife has been valued at between five to 20 billion a year, excluding timber and marine wildlife. Climate change, as we are aware, is uh, one of the challenges of our time. It is not only, uh, it has not only devastating impacts on vulnerable community, but it's also impacting on our ter uh, terrestrial and maritime ecosystem. Impact on coral reef, for example, 
will have a direct impact on tourism. There is also growing concern on the impact of pollution from various sources. In particular, the increase of plastic waste is finding, it way, is finding its way into our oceans and eventually entering our food chain with impact not only affecting nature, but people as well, and threatening even the food security in the fishery sector. Excellencies, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, in order to better manage and conserve the natural resources, and in particular wildlife, there is a need for collective action, it was said by my predecessor, collective action by all sectors, the international community present here, which I commend your presence to be here, to come to uh, Victoria Falls, the capital of uh, tourism in Zimbabwe, the government, the local community, and the private sector, the CBD COP 14 decision on sustainable wildlife management calls on parties to evaluate multidisciplinary approaches to combining better knowledge of the use and trade of wildlife into taking into account the knowledge, innovation, and practices of indigenous people and local community and the livelihoods uh, alternative for the customary sustainable use of uh, wildlife. Local community are at the front line of human wild, uh, wildlife conflict and yet they are expected to contribute to the conservation of bio biological diversity. Therefore, let us empower them by placing them at the center of conversation and ensure that they benefit accordingly. I believe my dear sister Prisica invited the local community to be here and have a conversation with us so that at a very high level with our excellency presidents of our, our countries, we can all find a solution to put you on the business so that we don't, we, don't leave, we don't leave anyone behind. Africa also needs to regulate bush meat harvesting and put management plan in place for the conservation of the targeted species or else most of them face extinction. There is also need for African countries to share wildlife resources so that some species are reintroduced in habitats where they were dri where they're driving to extinction by women. Of course, uh, translocation of species should be preceded by comprehensive study and guarantee of their safety and the security by their new host countries. With this, I commend my sister Prisica when she was in Angola a month ago. She promised to give my home country, Angola, some elephant. Thank you, uh, thank you, Minister. <laughs> we cannot manage to drive the natural based economy unless there is capacity building and finance. Let government and the private sector mobilize domestic resources in addition to external ones for investment in wildlife and ecosystem at large. Excellencies, delegates, uh, distinguished delegates, Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to share just some few steps we are taking at the African Union to tackle this issue of uh, wildlife. At the continental level, the African Union is rolling out the implementation of the African strategy on combating illegal exploitation and illicit trade in wild fauna and flora in Africa. To track the implementation of the strategy, a monitoring and reporting tool have been developed and we encourage countries to strengthen their data collection and reporting mechanism accordingly because we believe in the next summit we are going to report to our leaders the, the, the achievement of each country in terms of the wildlife 
and in line with our African strategy. So I look forward to get good data so that we can compile a, a comprehensive report in order to report and have the real status of the wildlife on our continent. In line with, the, with Summit, one of the objectives of the continental strategy is to promote the participatory, participatory, participatory approach with economic development and the community livelihood through sustainable use of wild fauna and flora. We hope that through finding mechanisms such as the global environmental facility, I hope the partners are here, eh? and in collaboration with the private sector, countries will be able to implement components of the strategy. Excellencies, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, on the margin of uh, AU summit held in February this year, the commission launched a campaign and identify, identi identify first ladies to champion the ban of the use of single-use plastic in Africa. We hope that this will eventually contribute in the global efforts towards healthy ocean and a sustainable blue economy. The Commission also hosted in April this year the African Regional Consultative Process for the post-2020 global framework on biodiversity in collaboration with the CBD Secretariat. We, have, we believe that the process is key in engaging the continent towards shaping a good deal for nature and people in 2020. As I conclude, I would like to express our appreciation to the organizer of this great summit and call upon our develop, uh, development partner to support Africa in the effort to boost the natural-based economy. Let me assure you all that the African Union Commission on the able leadership of His Excellency Musa Faki Mohammed remain committed to support the growth of natural-based economy so that he can contribute in the realization of our Agenda 2063 the Africa we want. We are ready to work with the partners and the private sector to enhance support to our member country. I thank you very much for your kind attention and looking forward to a, sec a successful summit. Asante sana, muito obrigada, merci beaucoup, shukran, tatenda, siwabunga. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Commissioner. I particularly noted when you said Asante Sana. <laughs> Your Excellencies, Honorable Ministers, I have the rare opportunity of delegating an assignment upwards. May I invite the Honorable Minister for the next assignment? Honorable Minister. A very good morning to all of you. Mangwanani, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, all protocol observed, it is my singular honor and privilege to invite our host president, Comrade Emerson Dambuzomnangagwa, to present his keynote address. President Mnangagwa, as most of you will be aware, is the president of the Second Republic of Zimbabwe. He has been at the forefront in terms of leading Zimbabwe's re-engagement efforts. On coming into office, he made the bold declaration that Zimbabwe is open for business, which has seen billions of dollars and investments being committed to Zimbabwe. Numerous such projects are slowly taking shape all over the country, giving renewed hope to Zimbabweans 
from all walks of life. He has also reached out to his colleagues in the region, and it comes as no surprise to have such a distinguished panel of heads of states among us. Your Excellency, sir, you may wish to deliver your keynote address. Pray, may you be seated. Your Excellencies, heads of state and government, my colleagues, President of the Republic of Namibia and Chairman of SADC, President Genkob, my brother and colleague, President of the Republic of Zambia, Comrade Eddie Galungu, my brother and colleague, President of the Republic of Botswana, Comrade Masisi, in absentia, President Joao Lorenzo of Angola, as represented by the Minister of Environment. Honorable ministers responsible for wildlife from various countries who are present. Other honorable members, honorable ministers who are here. The African Union Commissioner for Rural Economy and Agriculture, Ambassador Joseph Sacco. The Secretary General of CITES, Ms. Yvonne Higuero, the United Nations Environment Program Deputy Executive Secretary, Ms. Joyce Musuya. Your Excellencies, Ambassadors, and members of the Diplomatic Corps who may be here, senior government officials from our various countries, all our distinguished sponsors and partners, members of the media fraternity, distinguished guests, uh, ladies and gentlemen. It is with great pleasure that I welcome you all to Zimbabwe and especially to the Victoria Falls National Park and World Heritage Site, one of the world's seven natural wonders. As many of you may be aware, Victoria Falls is situated in the Kavango Zambezi Transfrontier Conservation Area, Kaza, which is the home of the African elephant. The Victoria Falls is a local name. It is called Mosio Tunya, the smoke that thunders. But of course, we call it the Victoria Falls because we didn't have capacity to market it at the time Dr. Livingston visited us and we showed him the falls. <laughs> then he named it after the then Queen of England, the United Kingdom, Queen Victoria. So for purposes of tourism, we continue to call it Victoria Falls. 
We are delighted to be host to, to this inaugural Wildlife Economy Summit, the first of its kind on the African continent, which is being held under the theme Communities for Conservation, harnessing conservation, tourism, and supporting governments. End of quote. This resonates with our renewed effort to ensure that our citizens benefit from the sustainable management of natural resources and wildlife. It is my sincere hope that you have experienced the warm Zimbabwean hospitality since your arrival. I am optimistic that our deliberations will go a long way towards the realization of the conservation agenda of our great continent, Africa. Thriving wildlife resources have a tremendous potential to be instrumental in sustainable socioeconomic development through associated wildlife-oriented businesses such as ecotourism, hunting, and photographic safaris, among other benefits. We must therefore continue to utilize platforms such as this one to explore innovative ways to leverage wildlife resources to grow our economies, eradicate poverty, achieve broad-based employment, create decent jobs, especially for women and youths, it is equally important to guarantee biodiversity within our ecosystems. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, this summit is being held when the tourism sector in Zimbabwe is on the rebound. We are making concerted efforts to rejuvenate our tourism and hospitality industry so that it meaningfully contributes towards the attainment of our national vision to become a middle-income country and economy by 2030. To this end, achieving peaceful human wildlife coexistence and the sound conservation principles are a top priority to my government. The communal areas management program for indigenous resources, which is a testimony of the need for more robust community-based natural resources management strategies continue to be revigorated. In addition to encouraging community participation, my government is promoting an integrated concept of conservancies, which involves strong private sector participation. Conservancies have also become important partners in developing tourism activities and products in non-traditional tourism areas, thereby enhancing broad-based empowerment. As a result, we now have conservancies in the Save Valley, Bubwe Valley, and the Malilangwe Wildlife Reserve, among others. These initiatives have seen notable annual population growth of some species, such as elephants 
rhinos, lions, and buffaloes, to mention a few. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, Zimbabwe subscribes to the founding principles of the Convention of International Trade in Engendered Species, CITES. We remain committed to the adherence of its protocols and rules. We are gravely concerned, however, by the one-size-fits-all approach where banning of trade is creeping into the CITES decision-making processes. We call upon the institution to resist the temptation of being a policy institution and instead be a developmental one which promotes the intricate balance between conservation and sustainable utilization of all wildlife resources. In relation to the conservation of elephants, the savanna elephants, which are predominantly found in southern Africa, constitute approximately 50% of the continent's elephant species in southern Africa. This bears testimony to our region's success in championing sustainable conservation programs. In addition, our region has the largest range area and elephant numbers, which extend beyond designated wildlife areas to include communal areas. This success must be duly recognized. While our voices and concerns given due consideration, Distinguished delegates, the global wildlife community is going to CITES COP18 in Geneva, Switzerland, in August this year. As a country and as a region, we remain guided by our principle of sustainable utilization of wildlife. We are determined. We are determined to ensure that conservation in both sustainable and beneficial is both sustainable and beneficial to host communities. Zimbabwe, as with other African countries pursuing in situ wildlife conservation, requires significant funding for the conservation agenda. Communities that are living adjacent to protected areas continue to experience unprecedented human life conflicts with wildlife animals. They risk being maimed or killed and their crops are destroyed season after season. They must experience the value and developmental benefits of living with and conserving wildlife. At present, our country's land area under protected area and the wildlife production is approximately 26% of the total land size of the country. This is an indication of the enormous value we place on wildlife. However, the management of such expansive land area requires a significant amount of funding and investment. 
We welcome partners and investors to optimally manage and unlock value from our wildlife towards helping build nature-based economies. As a government, we will continuously ensure a conducive operating environment for wildlife management and conservation. As you are aware, safari hunting is a vital cog in successful wildlife economies. Proceeds obtained from hunting are reinvested towards the provision of game water. These animals need water. There's climate change. So we must provide them with water. Also need fencing so the quarrel is reduced between them and our people. And of course, law enforcement against the poachers requires funding, among other conservation activities or initiatives. We continue to call for the free trade in hunting products, as these have a positive impact on the national and local economies of our countries. Currently, Zimbabwe has about US $600 million worth of ivory and rhino horns stocks most of which is from nat nat natural attrition of those animals. If we are allowed to dispose the same under agreed parameters, the revenue derived therefrom would suffice to finance our operational conservation efforts for the next two decades. Going forward, Zimbabwe encourages a world that embraces the principle of a shared responsibility where natural resources are utilized in accordance with the principle of sustainability. We encourage a process where accruing benefits from natural resources are fairly and equitably shared among communities living within wildlife areas. This way, the wildlife resources add value and improve the quality of life of local communities and the quality of life of the animals themselves. Distinguished delegates, my government is committed to play its part in addressing the challenge of poaching and has instituted a raft of measures to curb this cage. These include the implementation of the SADC protocol on wildlife conservation and the law enforcement park and species management plans and policies, as well as co combating the use of poisons and encouraging aerial surveillance support and application of new technologies, among others. We are also strengthening our law enforcement to combat internal and cross-border wildlife crime. As a stakeholder, we stand ready to increase our participation in other regional, continental, and global conservation campaigns. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I once again welcome you to Zimbabwe. And I invite you to find some time of the busy schedule to tour the nearby majestic 
Victoria Falls, and also visit our national park, where you will most likely encounter all members of the big five. There are plenty here. But as you get showered by the rainbow shower at the Victoria Falls, my sincere advice is that don't carry umbrellas. That is praise spiritual. <laughs> we guarantee you that by the time you reach your transport, your cars, you'll be dry. Doesn't matter what type of weather, you'll be dry. So don't carry umbrellas, just be sprayed. With these remarks, it is now my singular honor and pleasure to officially declare the inaugural Africa Wildlife Economy Summit officially opened. I thank you. Another round of applause to the keynote presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Very clear pronouncement. I've learned in my career as a civil servant that at times you go to a meeting, that sounds very complicated and you struggle to find what the meeting is about. Now, I've learned to take some take-home points. And the key take-home point that I got from His Excellency's presentation is sustainable utilization of resources. So in the event that you have not picked anything up now, just write sustainable utilization of resources. The second thing I got was the call for CITES to be species developmental in approach. A key take home point, let's propagate the species that are endangered rather than try to sustain only what we have. Let's grow the cake. The third point, communities to get benefits from wildlife so they relate and protect the same. Those are three key points that I took. Of course, the fourth, the statistics. 600 million worth of ivory and rhino horn in stock in Zimbabwe alone. Enough money to sustain the operational budget for the Zimbabwe National Parks for up to 20 years. And these are stocks. A huge cost also going just to the upkeep and security of the resources. Ladies and gentlemen, this takes us to the end of the official opening program of this, of this summit, but we will proceed along the way as follows. There are two things that we will be doing. May I invite the Director General of National Parks, Mr. Mangwanya, CE for Zimbabwe Tourism Authority, Maile Kukuma, Mr. Marufu, Forestry Commission, Ambassador Chidea, Mrs. Morumbi, to quickly come to the front. We want to proceed by way of presentation to gifts to the visiting heads of state and government who are here with us. I will ask you to get the gifts and proceed to the head of state and government and deliver them guided as, as guided by the chief of protocol, Ambassador Kajese. as they are just preparing the gifts, I want to indicate, colleagues, that in the interest of time, you are free to, on a case-by-case -case basis, get the drinks that are available in the hall, but also get your coffee and come back and sit so that we proceed with the day. As and when you go out, if you look to the east, you will see some smoke 
that is rising there, that is the smoke that thunders, that is excellence mentioned, otherwise now known as the Victoria Falls. A round of applause as they give, present gifts to the head of state, to His Excellency the Zambian President Ed Kalungu. To His Excellency the Namibian President. To Botswana President Masisi, His Excellency President Masisi. Thank you very much. Gifts also for His Excellency the Namibian President. Thank you very much. To His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Zimbabwe. Thank you, Excellency. Representing the Angolan president. Sorry, Yunep, Joyce, Masuya. Thank you very much. <laughs> Commissioner Sako, it's yours, Commissioner. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. I, I know you are all wondering what would be contained in the briefcases, what would be contained in the green covered boxes. I'm, I'm equally anxious. I'm not aware, so please don't ask me. I know there's a temptation to ask the director of ceremonies thereafter. I am not aware. Your Excellencies, with your indulgence, Your Excellencies, we will proceed to a very brief photo shoot where we will kindly proceed as guided again by the Chief of Protocol to proceed as follows. I will kindly invite the honorable ministers who are amongst us to come and stand just in front of the main podium Thereafter, I will invite their excellencies to come and stand just behind you. There will be a time for a very brief photo shoot. And thereafter, I will invite their excellencies to be led by the chief of protocol to resume their seats just in, in the front seat so that they will have ease of access to the screen that is just behind them. So honorable ministers, may I invite you to come to the front. Honorable ministers amongst us. Ambassador Kachis. May I also invite the heads of delegations where there are no ministers, the head of delegations, the heads of the institutions represented herein. May I also request that you come to the front. Are they still? May I invite also the head of CITES to come to the front? Honorable Teresa Coffey, I didn't see her. Is she here? Thank you. The World Bank, if they are represented here in. May I humbly invite Your Excellency to lead the, their Excellencies to proceed and just stand behind your ministers.
thank, thank you very much, Press. Thank you, all the photographers, Your Excellencies. You may wish now to proceed down. Ambassador Kajia said the Chief of Protocol will lead you down. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. May I, may I kindly request that we, we take our seats? Thank you so much. May I kindly request that we take our seats? Thank you, media. Thank you, press. I know you want to get the best shot, and best shot you will get. Your Excellencies, Allow me at this stage. Your Excellencies, allow me at this stage to invite the moderator for the session who will be coming through to lead the proceedings. I've done my part. My name is Munesu Munodawafa, Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Environment, Tourism and Hospitality Industry. It is my honor to invite the moderator, Patricia Amira, who is a seasoned and versatile communications specialist of over 20 years experience to come through and moderate the following session. Patricia has been out carving a niche position as one of the Africa's foremost presenters and media hosts and has been featured in Forbes Africa, Top 40, and a number of other such publications. Thank you. She has also won several <laughs> awards for her contributions to the media, and she hopes to leverage her acumen on the long-term transfor transformational and strategic communications in the development sector. She says you can only, she prefers to be seen as a conduit. But as the country it comes through, may we allow the members of the media, the most informed members of our society, they know what will happen at times before it even happens. We allow them to stay in for this particular session. Thank you so much. Amira, let's give our hands of approval to Amira as she comes through. Okay, thank you for your warm welcome, Mr. Munodawafa, and to the fantastic Drum Cafe. I was enjoying them earlier. Not that we're trying to chase the elephants away, but more to move us closer together. Your Excellencies, honored guests, it's a pleasure to be here with you all. I travel the world in my work, but never before have I had the thrill of such a majestic setting such as this. But then again, I'm surrounded by people who likely see this unique natural space on a regular basis. I remember Chief Shana described it as a useful stone like any other, in spite of visitors coming from far and wide to see it. But I do hope that it still continues to stir and propel you all forwards in your critical conservation work. Critical work that began yesterday 
with the workshop that brought together community representatives from Algeria, Senegal, Uganda, Mozambique, Namibia, and all points in between. This group of community representatives already stood as an example of the transboundary cooperation that Africa's wildlife economy requires to thrive. Those that were here from yesterday, or were there yesterday, would all agree it was a very interactive session. There was a sense of openness, a willingness to learn and listen, and a determination and commitment to constructive ideas towards a newer approach to conservation. There was an interesting display of perspectives in terms of electoral processes when it came to selecting three representatives, which was accompanied with much amusement. But you'll get to hear from the democratically elected three a little later on today when we have an opportunity to discuss community co-investors and what it means for all of us. Numerous points were made, and I'll mention a few here. The need to strengthen rural markets examine women's socio-economic rights. Chief Charumbira spoke of the need to harmonize the different voices within local institutions. Also crucial for the future, how academic institutions follow through, playing their part in building the much needed capacity and also how traditional approaches to wildlife management can be incorporated going forward. I think that was His, His Majesty de Fima a traditional king from DRC, all valid points that I'm sure will come up again over the course of the next two days. What was evident is that there is no single approach that will work for all, but there is a need for more collaborative policies in regard to our resources, resources that are utilized for the global good. There is a dire need to do things differently. Now, with the thundering spiritual spray of Musi Otunya as our backdrop, in the context of African development, this is a time to talk with each other, listen to each other, connect and share our knowledge, build a new paradigm to drive the conservation agenda in this continent for generations to come. So here's to this seminal gathering to spark global conversation and action on Africa's wildlife economy. Let's start by envisioning the immense opportunities, the possibility of futures. What would we like to see happen? That is the question. And to spark some thought, I'm pleased to invite two young speakers. Hilma Angula is from Namibia. She's very passionate about natural resource management. And she is a master's degree holder in conservation leadership from the University of Cambridge. Bright girl, good girl. Currently works as a governance and institutional development coordinator with the Namibian Association of CBNRM support organizations. And the second speaker is Nkosana Masuko from Zimbabwe, a 24-year-old um, and the founder of Phenomenon Technologies a startup which specializes in creating educative virtual reality experiences of travel destinations through its Fundo VR platform. I'd like to invite you both up. Where are you? Oh, there you are. Welcome. Please, a warm welcome to them. To our excellencies and all protocols observed, I greet you. I was born and raised in a very small village about 800 kilometers north of Windhoek. And I was very fortunate to have been raised by my parents and my grandparents in one home. My grandfather was a man of many tales. And he believed in fairness, in equitability, accountability, and information sharing. So much so that he called too many small gatherings and we named him Mr. Tell Me More. As I grew up in this village, it was a privilege and an honor. But the most remarkable moment was when I went to Etosha National Park, Namibia's most renowned. There I saw elephants and lions for the first time. And the feeling is still unmatched to this day. When I came back, I was very excited to tell my grandfather about it, 
But what I saw from him was a different reaction to the men I know previously. There was a long pause and a look of uncertainty in his eyes, and I wondered there in silence whether to continue talking or to stop. But as I was almost about to stand and leave, he held my hand and he said, you see my granddaughter, not so long ago that national park you speak about, great friends of mine live, live there. Their families called it home. But because of the differences that happened, they were chased out of that. And it's not by coincidence. We were busy working in the mines, and we only get to hear the news when you come back home because there was poor communications. So you see, those wildlife are not ours. They belong to other people, other visitors coming from somewhere else and they belong to our government. So it is no point and it's no, diff it's no situation that you see here today that we don't have wildlife in this area. It's not because they were not here before, but it's because we killed them and many of them moved away out of this area. So as a young person, I was confused. I was even wondering, why could this be the case? How can this be coming from my grandfather? I felt deprived in that very moment. But I think it's when my passion and my calling to study conservation initially came alive. And years later, when I got employed as a community liaison officer for the CBNRM program in my country, I got a chance to travel to a community closer to a, a Tosha National Park. And there, out of curiosity, I found a grandfather and asked him about the history of the park. And he said to me, you see my child, that park used to be my home. I was evicted not so long ago. But in that moment, we were very angry. In that moment, we wanted to retaliate. In that moment, we felt that our rights were violated. We felt that our way of life was disrupted. But you see, today, our government has recognized us. Our government has given us rights over wildlife and we are benefiting from that wildlife today. It is not that we don't have problems. Of course we do. The lions continuously pre predate on our livestock. The elephants destroy our crops and our water points. But this is our heritage. This is your heritage. This is what you should tell your children tomorrow. I was very proud in that moment, and I wished my grandfather was alive so that I could tell him that there is an alternative to what he was so afraid of many years ago. But as I stand here today narrating this story, I am recognizing the power of intergenerational knowledge exchange. Even more importantly, I am recognizing the efforts that our governments are putting in recognizing the role of communities. I am understanding now, finally, that it is not other people who will do stuff for us, but it is us who will have a dynamic change and a shift in how we think. I implore and I applaud the governments who are taking communities at central core. I applaud the business partners and the conservation practitioners who are recognizing that communities are key and they are central to what we do in conservation. And with that, my name is Hilma from Namibia. Thank you. To your excellencies and all protocol observed, good morning. I walked into a classroom ready to have a great day with my learners. The topic of the day was biodiversity. As I usually do, I start the lesson with a question. How many have visited a game park? I asked my learners. A brief moment of silence took the classroom and a pause. After that, one of my students, Antil, I knew he was up to no good. He raised his hand because he'd always have something to say for any question. Say, the only games we know are on our smartphones, he said. I was surprised. This was a concern to me. I further went on to clarify my question. Students, how many have ever gone to a tourism destination? 
here in Zimbabwe. And to my surprise, none of the students raised their hands. I was inspired. How come this is possible? Why haven't these students managed to go to a tourism or wildlife destination in their own country? This made me to further look further into the situation. I went to other classrooms, sparked the same question, and to my surprise, I found out that in the whole school, only a handful of learners had managed to once participate in a wildlife or tourism excursion. And this was disappointing. This was because during my college studies, my, my dissertation had focused on the importance of field excursions in learning as a way of making uh, concepts more clear to students. I further went to ask my other colleagues working in different schools if they were experiencing the same situation. And this is how it happened. This is how my, uh, my begin into virtual reality technologies started. As I was intrigued by this situation, I started experimenting with technology on how these learners can be helped. And I found it out a solution called Fundovia. This is a low-cost alternative for learners to actually experience wildlife and tourism destination through a technology called virtual reality. Some of you may know it. It allows a person to view other places as they are seated where they are. It was then in April 2018 that Fundovia was born. As we started bringing these excursions to the classrooms, the learners were surprised when they wore the headsets. You could see the smiles from them, how intrigued they are by experiencing the elephants, the lions, and all the different wildlife in their country. This was an amazing feel, especially for a teacher. I set out to continue with this project, and we went to more schools. This simply showcased that innovation truly has the power to, con uh, to develop and empower like economy and wildlife tourism, especially if we are to make a new deal with the rural communities. It is therefore that we set out to make this platform a global platform where learners could really immerse into different excursions, no matter where they are, and help them throughout. Youth led initiatives have therefore shown case that it is important for us as the youth to really lead the innovation sector in the wildlife and tourism environment. If truly we are to make a sustainable and economically developed future. I therefore urge the governments and ministries listening to this that we should, as the youth, be partnered with such organizations and help into making a new deal for the rural economic uh, wildlife development. My name is Nkosana Maso. I'm the founder of CEO, uh, CEO of Phenomenon Technologies. Thank you. Powerful stories of disenfranchisement towards youthful ownership. Thank you both very much. Hilma from Namibia and Kosani from Zimbabwe. Thank you. And it's about helping each other to look at the world through another's eyes. Crucial community voices that are at the nexus of all the work that you do. We heard it earlier from Ms. Msuya earlier, how we unlock this immense potential, on the ground potential together is what can shift the paradigm towards a more holistic sustainability. It is a challenge to all of us in playing our part to help integrate rural wildlife economies. Now, Philip Ihenacho knows much about this. As a conservation philanthropist, he recently set up African Nature Investors, which is an organization aimed at attracting more African leadership involvement by employing best practice park management, amongst other creative ideas, at Gashaka Gumti National Park in Nigeria. Let's invite Philip Ihenacho up to the stage to hear more. Philip? Oh, there you are. <laughs>
Your Excellencies, Honorable Ministers, Distinguished Ladies and Gentlemen. I'd uh, like to start, uh, first of all, by thanking everyone uh, for the honor of being able to speak at this conference. Um, I am uh, particularly thankful to the um, people who asked me to speak at this conference, and I would like to commend them for their courage in doing so. I am certainly not an obvious choice. So I am not a conservationist by training. Um, I'm not a biologist, I'm not a scientist. Um, I've not worked for an environmental NGO. Um, most people in this room probably have more experience about conservation practices than I. Uh, my background is a finance background. Um, so I have been involved in investing in Africa for the last 25 years. Um, initially um, as a capital raiser, uh, so raising capital both from within Africa but predominantly from without for uh, large-scale private sector projects. And the last 10 years or so, uh, we have, uh, myself and my partners, have invested our own capital in projects in Africa, predominantly infrastructure. So I'm not an obvious choice to speak at a conference like this. Um, I'm also um, not an obvious choice to speak in a conference like this um, because I am skeptical of some of the dialogue around conservation. Um, I'm skeptical in particular of organizations that start with save the something. Um, <clears throat> in part, uh, uh, because I think not, not so much the intention, but the rationale is, it does not resonate with me. Um, I'm also not an obvious person to speak at this conference because I'm from big bad Nigeria and Nigeria is not exactly a beacon of success when it comes to conservation and tourism. Um, and and uh, so why am I here? <laughs> I am here uh, because I passionately believe in conservation and I believe the underlying cause is so important uh, that I must lend my voice to this cause. And I'm here to explain to you why it has resonated for me, why conservation resonates for me, but also to address the topic that I've been asked to speak about, which is how do I think about unlocking the investment potential in this sector? Um, so I'll start by talking a little bit about um, how and why I got involved with conservation. Um, there's the sentimental reason, um, which is probably um, the true reason, uh, but the sentimental reason is that even though I was born in Lagos, um, when I was about six years old, we moved up country to a town in Nigeria that is widely recognized as the most beautiful town in Nigeria. It's a little town called Jos, and it's up in the highlands, um, in the mountainous part of Nigeria. Um, and as a child, um, I used to enjoy, from the age of about 12 or 13, I used to enjoy very much hunting Franklin and guinea fowl. And I could walk from my house and in 30 minutes be in the bush um, and spent uh, many, many wonderful days and nights of my childhood um, in the bush, uh, which is where I have learned that I am the most comfortable um, and the area that I love the most. Um, once I had children, 